being stealthy. I keep still when I see me. Hi, Gizmo here. I'm on another stealth trip. And this trip's about just how to actually stay stealthy if you're doing a stealth camp. I'll go over some of the things that I do to make my stealth camp more stealthy. One of the first things I did is I, um, I snuck onto this trail so no one could see me. So no one saw me enter the trail. No one knows that I'm here. If I um, pass anybody on the trail, I'll just pretend like I'm um, just on an afternoon hike. Why have I got the big backpack? Well, I'm training for a trip. And that's really not a lie because I'm always training for a trip. <laughs> always got some trip planned so yeah I'm actually training for a trip but, um, yeah I like this forest it's very nice just here all the swampland around very thick and lush So, let's head off and see if we can find somewhere stealthy to camp. On with the video. Hi, Gizmo here. Boy oh boy, we've had a ton of rain this last couple of weeks. And uh, there's floods everywhere, so. Once again, 2021 is uh, turning out to be a bit of a suspect year, like, like in 2020. Because uh, of all this rain, it's brought out all the mozzies, there's mosquitoes everywhere. Uh, so I'll have to really bug up tonight. It's been so dank and moist around that we've got a really very low uh, fire danger. So I can have a campfire tonight. And um, when I make the campfire, I'm going to make sure that there's almost no smoke. So I'm, I'm fairly close to where I did my first stealth camp. Uh, so now I've just got to hunt around and find a spot. And if you're going to do something like do a stealth camp, don't be irresponsible. I mean, you're doing a stealth camp, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be camping, but that doesn't mean you should be doing irresponsible things. So still take care of the environment and look after everything. You do that, and you should have a good experience. Alright, I can see a few clear spots up ahead means I've got to leave, tra leave the trail now and just head through the scrub so I'll do that and um, yeah, see if I can find a, a clear spot for a camp for about 20 minutes and I've um, 
haven't found anywhere that's clear. I found this little spot which is just reasonably spread out. I think this will do me for tonight. I'll just have a little reconnoiter around and see if there's anything clearer in the nearby vicinity, but I think this is it tonight. only five meters from the other spot it's a lot better stealth camp well I didn't really organize to do anything this weekend and I um, it's it's Friday night and I just really wanted to get out we actually got a something happening a family do tomorrow on Saturday night so I thought well I'm not gonna be able to get out and do anything on the weekend I might as well try it on the Friday so um, I just Google map and saw it, so I found a nice spot that looked good and um, I've come driven out to here and just come to the bush and it's yeah quite a nice little spot and I can still hear the traffic it's, it's a fair way from here but I can still hear it um, it's going to be nice here just for an overnighter and why do why do you do this well why not I love getting out in the bush I think that's the part of it that I really like, just getting out in the bush, spending a bit of time practicing some bush skills, some bush crafts, and just enjoying it. I mean, why else do you do it? And uh, as far as stealthy is concerned, well, just I don't want to be near anybody, and uh, that's why stealthy. It's not actually, I'm not in a national park or anything, so I'm not going to hurt anybody. Um, Oh, this was a dragonfly sitting over there. Um, yeah, it's, it's just great to do this sort of thing. So later on, see, to, now to be stealthy as well, I won't be setting up my camp until later. I won't put up the tent. I won't do any of that. If anybody does come across me, all I'm doing is uh, having a rest after I've had a hike. Alright, I've built myself a little fireplace here, just out of some rocks, I only need a small fire. Um, I'm going to make the fire and try and make as little smoke as possible, um, but that won't be until it starts to get dark. So what I'm, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to gather all my materials for my fire, and uh, then I'll feather some of this uh, homemade fatwood that I've made. If you want to see how I made this homemade fatwood, you can follow the link just here, see how I did it. I'll be using my um, little knife that I made. The other thing too is when I get up in the morning, I won't be making a fire because, you know, for a start, you've got to put a fire out. And if I put a start a fire up in the morning and then walk away, even though I attempt to put it out, it could be still smoldering. At least when I go to bed at the night, it's had plenty of time to die down and go out. So when I make them, wake up in the morning, I know for sure the fire's gone completely out. So that's another thing that I'll be doing in the morning. And then the first thing I'll do as soon as I get up is just pull the tent straight down. That way, if anybody comes across me again, oh, I've just come for a morning hike. <laughs> just in the bush, having breakfast in the bush. Uh, and it's just perfectly fine. And I like to come out and just practice with all the little things that I've made. Some of the things that I made, like I made this knife. Um, I um, went and collected some grass tree resin with this last week, but I'm going to use this for my steak tonight because I've got a steak for dinner. So I'll be able to use my nice little tiger knife that I made. Um, I made this uh, 
handle for this fire steel and I've got a video for that. I don't have a video for the first little knife that I made because I, I didn't have my Maker Stuff channel then and I didn't do it but this was it. This is the first little knife that I made and if you've seen any other videos you would have seen this knife. It's a great little knife. It's a bit dirty now from the last time I used it because I didn't bother cleaning it but um, it's great for scraping my fire steel and you can see me using that on my making fire video I've got a video where I show all different ways to make fire and I've said on that video um, I usually don't get a fire going first go because I'm too impatient and that's true most of the time but remember this is a stealth camp and I want to be stealthy so I want to get this fire going first go I also want to get it full flame straight away so there's no smoke so I'm going to prepare, prepare, prepare before I even light this one up. So I'll use this little, I'll use this little knife and my um, my waxwood that I've made to make some feather sticks. And this waxwood, that this one that works really well, is uh, soaked in turpentine and then coated in wax. And um, yeah, that's a great combination. I think what I'm going to do in future, because uh, I used the pine, the pine seemed to work better than any of the other timbers, is um, make some more. And I've got leftover things that I made all my other test samples of. I've got leftover um, vegetable oil, I've got leftover um, linseed oil, I've got leftover canola oil. I'm going to just put them all together and um, mix it like mix all those oils together and then soak it in so I should get a combination of them all just to use up that oil and then still the main ingredient will be um, turpentine because the turpentine worked really really well um, I'm sure there's other things you could use maybe maybe kerosene I don't know I think kerosene they would give off like a black sooty smoke so um, I don't know it might not but yeah, why, why bother? The terps worked really well. If you look at my video here, you'll see that the terps worked amazingly well. So making little um, fat wood sticks out of turpentine and pine and coating them in wax is just perfect. So I think it's about um, three o'clock now. Um, yeah, still a long way to go. It won't get dark till about six. So I can just chill now at camp and um, clear some debris. What I did, I'd cleared all the leaf litter away before I made my little fire pit. I dug down into the dirt in the ground and it's been absolutely torrential rain for the last couple of weeks and the ground is just completely saturated and sopping wet underneath all this um, wet leaf litter. So if I spread a big enough area around, I'll be um, no way I'll cause any um, sparks to ignite anything. It's too damp anyway. Yeah, I've got a um, a piece of Scotch fillet steak for dinner tonight, so I'll enjoy that. Throw that on my little um, pan that I've brought with me. Cook that up on the campfire, and that's pretty much all I've got. There's a steak. I haven't got anything else. Um, I've got some Gatorade and some water and I think once I um, have my steak and it starts to get dark I'll probably be tired now because I've been at work all day today um, I'll be really tired so I've got um, a, car, a couple of movies on my phone I might crash in the tent watch a movie and um, yeah I'll, I'll get up real early and just hike out of here Should be good. Some of you have been asking me how I set up the uh, gizmo bush chair without any paracord using a pillowcase or a t-shirt. Well I'll show you how and um, 
I'm just going to use my little bush saw. Here's another thing that I made on my making stuff channel, a little bush saw. Um, I'm just going to make it up with a little bush saw. Now the reason you don't need any paracord is because I'm going to get a stick, stretch it in between these two things and just spread it out and use the pillar case to keep it taut and that'll keep that backrest in place. It won't collapse on itself. What I need to do is find a stick about that long with a fork in it. Okay, here we go. This has got a nice fork in it, but it's a little bit long. It's actually perfect for this. It's a little bit long. See, it fits there, but it's just too long, so I can't jam it in. So what I need to do is I need to cut a V in this end of it here and then jam it in there. That'll hold the top in place. So I'll do that now with my little saw. One thing, the reason why you carry a saw rather than an axe when you go stealth camping too is because axe, that bang, bang, bang makes a really loud noise. The saw doesn't make anywhere near as much noise as an axe does. Look how beautiful this thing cuts. There we go, I've made, it, made, I've made a rough V in the end of that. So now all I, all I need to do is to ram that V in there and ram that other V down onto there. And there we go. There's my backrest done. My chair. No paracord, no nothing. I mean, I could have used a t-shirt if I had a t-shirt. But um, this is quite a comfortable chair. I can just relax down, camp with a backrest. Pretty good, pretty amazing, pretty simple to make. And you can see me making my bush chair here. <laughs> this whole video seems like a vlog of all my other videos, but I can't help that. It's all springy and everything. It's just really, really comfortable. So now I've got a comfortable place to sit while I'm cooking my dinner, just there, and uh, not sure where I'll set the tent up, I think just there. Pretty good. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is um, I'll just start feathering some of these um, fat wood sticks ready to preparation to light the fire. Okay, there's one. Okay, 
there's another one that's all it'll take I've got a lot more projects that I'm working on on my making stuff channel and uh, one of the ones that I'm working on for future is an axe now it started off as just an old axe head I had, a big old axe head that I had and I decided I want an axe to take with me when I go hiking but it's too big and heavy, I'll just chop it down a bit smaller make a small handle for it and it'll be a nice axe to take with me hiking but um, it's turned into a bit of an elaborate project now I've um, actually got a lot more ideas and I've got a lot more fancy with it and um, yeah I can't wait to show that to you, to you all when I finally get that project finished it's still a long way in the it's still a long way in the distance that one because uh, it's uh, a lot of intricate work that I have to do to that but um, yeah it's it's a great project looking forward to finishing that one pillow end of my mattress down near my feet because I don't use that. I use an actual pillow, an inflatable pillow now. I have a pillow end down the bottom. Okay, that ought to do me. That's what I've been using. It's this uh, Cedar Summit pillow. That's pretty good. And when I go hiking in the bush, um, I usually use this one program above all others, and it's maps.me. It shows me exactly where my position is in the bush, and yeah, I really like this program because you don't need Wi-Fi. You only need connection to a satellite, and you still get the maps. A lot of those programs that you download that are um, hiking maps. Um, you actually have to download it and do it all before you go on the trail because once you're out on the trail if you haven't got Wi-Fi um, internet on your phone which I don't have internet on my phone um, yeah so I can't use any internet based programs on my phone so unless I'm at home with the Wi-Fi connection when I'm out in the bush I have no Wi-Fi connection so I actually have to use a solely GPS based map navigation system and this uh, maps.me is perfect for that there's a, there's a few mozzies around so I'm going to try and light up one of these um, homemade mosquito coils that I made to see if it actually works I tested them out and it seemed like they'd work but I actually want to try one at a campsite and see if it actually does work or not. I think it'll probably go out after a while. So I'll let that burn for a little while so it gets some uh, decent coal on it then I'll blow it out and see if it just smolders like a um, mozzie coil. like that.
might try opening it up a bit with my knife, see if that makes it any better. Okay, I've split it open, let's see how that goes. It worked good for a little while. Still going. Still going. Still going. I think the next time I try and make them, it might work. That's kind of working. The idea is right. It's just, um, yeah, it's still smouldering a little bit, but I think it'll go out any minute. I can smell the citronella really strong now. I'll do a bit of uh, research and I'll see if I can come up with a better concoction than just a, a straight piece of medium density fibre board. Um, I think I think maybe that um, cork board. Not actually cork, of course cork will be off of black toxic smoke. But that, you know, that fibrous um, pegboard, I don't know what that's made of, but it's really um, soft and porous. If I can find a piece of that, I'll try that. I don't want to smother the fire because I want flame. See how when there's flame there's not much smoke. Every time I put something on it starts to make smoke. I want that to turn into flame as quick as possible. Because it's making a bit of smoke. Probably not enough to be noticeable but now there's flame there's no smoke. So I just keep doing that. Just keep that smoke away. I only want a tiny little fire, just enough to cook my steak on, that's all. So I need to build up a bed of coals with these little twigs and see how I've managed to just keep all the smoke out of it. There's not really hardly any smoke at all, which is what I want because, um, yeah, just off in the distance there there's a highway and they'd be able to see the smoke from the highway. Well, I don't want that. So to be stealthy, don't throw a big bunch of stuff on, make a big bonfire, you're going to just make a lot of smoke and everyone's going to see where you are.
to do something small like this and just keep it nice nice flames so I'll just continue to feed that with these little sticks just the little ones so it builds up a little bed of coals once these little sticks form a tiny bed of coals then I'll move on to pencil sized um, sticks and uh, work my way from there so when you do it correctly like I did it today you get it going first go if you don't take the time to do it like I did today yeah it takes you three or four times so, which is what I normally do <laughs> there's this nice smoke free little fire it's perfect for what I want absolutely perfect for what I want there's no one can even see that I'm starting to make a little bit of smoke now. I'm going to stop and wait till it catches all on fire again. There you go, it's good to go again. Whenever I build a fire, I like to build it like that, rather than piling a pile up with the thing underneath so it all burns up the middle. I like to stretch the sticks across a gap, and uh, so the air can flow in underneath it, and I don't have to worry about standing them up. I can just put them crossways. Okay, now I'm going to start moving on to a little bit thicker sticks. I'm starting to get a small bed of coals in there now. Smoky again, just wait. There we go, all the smoke's gone. It's nice flames. The more flames you got, less smoke you got. So yeah, just continue doing that. And you should have a, a reasonably smoke-free fire. Got my coffee. Got my steak. Oh, there's a mozzie wants a piece of steak. Got my steak. My new tiger knife, which cuts the steak really, really well. Look at that. Just cuts through it like butter. Um, yeah. I'll see you on the next video. <laughs> Bye. Well, that's it for this video. Um, I'll see you on the next one. I hope you like this little stealth camp. I'll see you later.